I'd like to start by asking uh, who is having an ICO right now here? Just raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five people. Okay, who has already uh, finished an ICO? One. <laughs> okay, and uh, who is planning to do one in the future? One, two, three, four, five? Okay, so uh, my presentation today will basically walk you through the main uh, steps in uh, delivering your ICO. I'm gonna talk a bit about the components of one of these um, um, projects and um, if you want to talk a bit more about um, how to deliver one or if you need any advice, you can find me around uh, the whole day and also tomorrow. Uh, first things first, let me tell you a bit about me. Naomi introduced me in a very nice manner. Um, my name is Joanna. I'm one of the Forbes 30 under 30 batch of 2017. Um, I run a software development company, um, which is uh, basically a software development division of CrowdMentor, of 30 developers who are delivering ICO after ICO and product after product. And um, my main clients are very diverse, and you know, we say that we're just as good as our last clients. So I'm very happy to have delivered the whole technology stack of the Gibraltar blockchain exchange ICO last week. Basically, we just closed an ICO in nine seconds, which is wonderful. Um, apart from that, I have built blockchain exchanges like COS.io. I've built smart bridges between different blockchains, between ARK and Ethereum. And I have delivered projects for the United Nations, uh, Group Societe Generale, Transavia, as well as ICOs like Modex, Hackers Founders, Persona, Lockbox, um, and a few others. I mean, I have written like nine white papers. So basically, um, I have done a lot of stuff in this space and I hope that my advice will be useful for you and that you will go home with uh, a bit more blockchain education added to, uh, to your experience. First things first, how do we define an ICO? According to NASDAQ, an ICO is a fundraising mechanism in which new projects sell their underlying crypto tokens in exchange for Bitcoin and Ether. That would be the basic definition. But when discussing uh, how we want to uh, deliver ICOs and we look at all these successful projects that have taken uh, place in 2017, such as Filecoin, EOS, which is one of my, uh, my favorites, to be honest, or Bancor, we look at people who have given enough thought to their projects who have the vision and the tools to achieve their goals. People who have spent enough time planning and uh, enough time executing their idea and who are not just doing an ICO and bam, going to get a beautiful mansion or an island or something like that. <laughs> we are talking about people who actually want to change the world through something. So when you ask yourselves uh, to ICO or not to ICO, first you have to uh, think about how is your project changing the world? I'm not expecting any of you to say that you're revolutionizing a $500 billion industry. You cannot just change an industry from one project. Facebook, when it first appeared, didn't change social media. It created something, something that we all use today. Google, when they first appeared, they didn't uh, think that they would disrupt a whole business. Or Amazon, when they first appeared, no one knew about e-shops. But right now, they are the biggest players in their markets. You need to take things step by step and actually bring a change. Doing an ICO just for the sake of doing one is not lucrative. It will not help you on the long run and uh, it will not help your reputation. Um, you also need to look at how your project is making a good use of distributed ledger technology, because that's actually the name of blockchain, distributed ledger technology. Um, if your project could have been done with other technologies which actually do not require blockchain to be integrated in it, and if blockchain is used just for the sake of sounding more sexy, that's not working. You need to actually find a good use case to actually listen to the consultants that are working with you and uh, your advisors and the technical teams that are working with you and do something that is actually working, even if it's not as fancy as you wish sometimes. If you want to do an online shop, you can just sprinkle blockchain above it. <laughs> okay. 
Um, and uh, the third question is, do you definitely need an ICO? I bet that a software project doesn't always need $200 million to be developed. You know, I mean, uh, <laughs> that's a lot of money. Um, when uh, you think about doing an ICO, think about the funds that you already have. Think about uh, how much uh, money you want to raise and think about actually justifying why you are raising that amount of money. You need to be very transparent with your investors. If you say, I want to raise 100 million and you only need 5 million to develop your product, what do you do with the rest 95? Are you just gonna buy something nice, do some charity starting with yourself? It's not working like that. So, um, after you ask yourselves all these questions, you need to actually have a timeline for developing your product. You start with the concept. What do I want to achieve? What is my goal? How should my product look like? What am I solving? <coughs> then define your product as good as you can. Get a good product manager that actually understands technology and blockchain. And then if you decide that an ICO is the best step to, um, to deliver this, do an ICO. And after that comes the fun part, post ICO development, which will take years and years to finish and where you need a really good tech partner. I actually take care of the technology part and I'm really happy that so far my customers have understood why they need some features, why we advise them to not try to do everything at the same time and you know, just take the Moscow approach. Must have, ought to have, should have um, and wanna have. Don't try to get yourself stuck in features of the product just because you like them. It doesn't matter if you like them. You're, as the owner of the product, honestly, you're the least important person. The important people are your users. You need to actually bring them value and you need to always change your product according to their needs. This is why that product manager is really good because he or she should know something about this. Also, when you start uh, doing your, um, your product, you need to have some components in mind. First of all, you need a good team, a reliable team. People who are, have experience, who have the energy, and who have the drive to do this product. Because this will not be a normal nine to five job. This will be a 24 hour, round the clock work, and you will need to look at different legislations, like now in the European Union, the GDPR is coming. How do you mix GDPR and blockchain? Um, how do you... Um, respect the whole uh, fiscal um, code. How do, you, how do you take care of all of this? You need to have a team that looks at that. You need to have good marketing and good PR, starting with your community managers and going forward with uh, digital agencies that can help you deliver uh, good um, communication, having good people that are going to events and actually presenting your product and having an overall good structure of your communication, not a total chaos when people you know, deliver random messages which are not well controlled. You need to always develop your product and always get feedback from your users and you need to do good business development. These are the main areas that you need to look, like, uh, look at. Sorry. Um, when it comes to the team, uh, I've split it into three big portions. One is the co-founders, the people who had the initial idea and vision then you have your advisors, who are the people with the experience in the different industries that you are touching, and uh, who are the people that will give you the best advice in how to achieve that vision or how you can fine tune everything. And then you have the providers. You know, you have segments of your product that do not need continuous um, uh, work on them. You have the designers who will work from time to time, you will have um, people who do uh, the community management for your ICO and you might not need them for five years. So you need to split very well everyone into these categories and see how long you need them, what do you need from them and uh, in this way make a budget. It's not uh, cheap to make an ICO and uh, it's not uh, just you know, working uh, by itself. You need to have the funds and uh, energy to find these people. Okay, when it comes to marketing, I've split it into four big sections. One is the social media where you might have most of your future users. Uh, then you have uh, the ICO listing websites 
where you get your ratings, you get some, uh, some reviews and um, you, know, you get some uh, SEO. Then you have your community management where you need to think global and act local because there are a lot of people who invest in ICOs but they are not necessarily um, good with English. You might have people from Korea which invest a lot into ICOs and they might not speak English so they will not be able to get your message. You'll not be able to get your message through them because they need everything to be translated in their uh, language. You might have people from Russia, let's say, that do not speak English but are very excited about new projects. So this is where uh, your community manager and your bounty hunters come, uh, come in and they will translate your white paper, your website, uh, other documents and you will be able to get your message through. So think global and act local. Also, they have different environments that they communicate in. If all of us here use Telegram, um, the people in Korea might use Kakao Talk. Um, other people will use WeChat. So you cannot be everywhere at the same time. You need someone that does specifically this and they know how to do it. And apart from that, you need to get to events like this one. I, uh, so you need an ICO roadshow. You can get to Detainee or to Blog Show or to other events where you need to talk to people, talk to investors, because here you will get your biggest investors or partners. Um, you have to differentiate between uh, the investors that go on your website and contribute with uh, one Ether or 0 0.02 Bitcoins, and the people that will come to these events and will think uh, like, okay, I'm gonna invest 20K in your project. So split them very well and have people that come to these events and uh, actually help you develop your business. And speaking about business development, um, actually the first thing that you need to do is take care of all aspects that are connected to incorporating your business, um, having uh, very, very well-structured documents like SAFTs having good corporate partnerships with uh, other companies that might work well with your product. So um, think about other um, platforms that might use your product or how you can use different uh, parts of other platforms in your product because you cannot build everything by yourself and you do not need to reinvent the wheel. There are people who already did portions and you can just put a puzzle together and add your uh, value. And also take care of your investor relationship. The people that are investing in your uh, product will have to uh, get news about how it's developing. You will need to update them regularly and to have a very good relationship with them because they are the first people who actually believe in your product. So you need to, to be very fair and transparent with them. ICOs are right at the limit between VC and crowdfunding and you need to have a good communication that uh, puts these pieces together and um, has a professional tone and a friendly tone depending on the kind of investors that you have. And when it comes to your product, you need to, to think very well about how you approach things. You cannot just uh, start writing a white paper without having a clue about what you want to achieve. You need to start with a concept, do your token design, Think about your token lifecycle, how it moves through your platform or you know, how you want it to, um, to actually work. Add the technology part. You might need Ethereum, Arc, Hyperledger, depending on your kind of blockchain. And then write that white paper and just go forward smoothly with launching your product. <laughs> smoothly, right? <laughs> okay. Um, after you finish all those steps, you get to the contribution part. Uh, he's actually a contribution dashboard made uh, by my team. Um, when we talk about the contribution, we need to adapt to the market, see if uh, our investors prefer Ether or Bitcoin. For example, for GBX, uh, we only went for Ethereum and people were only contributing in Ether. Have a user verification mechanism because uh, you don't want uh, people who are involved with uh, terrorism or bad practices when it comes to, uh, to money to invest in our ICO and have your uh, token audited. You have a development company, but you also need someone that does the audit. You need to have everything checked, and um, this will only enhance the security. Uh, for example, for the, our GBX uh, client, we had four different companies that did the token uh, audit, which is huge. You only need like two, usually. 
okay? And uh, the last fun part is the post-ICO development. Uh, you need to actually stick to that timeline that you have promised in the beginning. Of course, timelines change. There are different factors that bring change, but always communicate that to your investors. Tell them why you change something and uh, what's the reason behind your uh, different decisions. Keep promoting your product because users don't come by themselves. They don't just find your product on Google and start, uh, start using it. You actually need to get to your users. And uh, do not make changes unless you have a valid reason. So if you said that you're going for Hyperledger and now you switch to Ethereum, you have to actually explain why, because they are two very different technologies. And uh, also when you look at what kind of uh, ICOs to invest in or what kind of ICOs to develop, you need to see what, I, um, what we expect to, uh, to have in 2018. From my point of view, we will have much more solid use cases. We will not have an ICO for um, bananas plantations. You can check, uh, check banana coin. Um, we will have already existing MVPs. Uh, we are going to look at the identity management solutions because the laws, especially in the European Union, are becoming more and more strict when it comes to, um, to identity management. We'll see a lot of asset tokenization and a lot of institutional funds uh, that are coming into ICOs. And also we will see the delivery of the already funded projects happening. There have been a lot of ICOs in 2017 and I can tell you that the market is much more mature and they are looking very well at what they are investing in. If one year ago everything was crazy and people were just pumping money, now we're actually talking about people who take a good look at your project. So this is everything that I had for you today. I hope that um, you got more information about how to deliver something, what to invest in, and uh, what are the trends for this year. And if you have any other questions or need any other advice from me, you can find me around during today. Thank you very much.